Hey everyone, so today I have Leo with me. We're gonna do a bit of an interview type of video and I'm just gonna talk a bit about how I met you because it was really interesting. My friend introduced me to you who's not even into hypnosis and mm. he was like, hey, I think you would vibe with this guy and I'm like, okay. <laughs> I don't know why I started following you and then I started researching hypnosis and what mm. it is. And then one day I was like, okay, I got to talk to you. Mm -hmm. And what you did, you were very open to having a chat, even though you knew that I wasn't coming for hypnosis. I don't know, maybe I worded it differently a bit for you. I was like, oh, damn, maybe I should book with you, you know? And you're like, mm -hmm. oh, let's chat. Let's see where it goes. <laughs> yeah. And at first I wanted to go for, um, how is it called? QHHT, if I'm correct. Mm -hmm. Yes, the Dolores now, Cannon method. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I was super interested in entities and entity removals. Mm. And then Leo yes. goes, um, they don't deal with that there. And I was like, okay, now I see why I have to talk to you. Yeah, it became very clear very quickly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for sure. So, Leo, I'm going to ask you questions, you know, about sure. if you, whatever you're open to share about your life and your transition from fashion. Yes. How did that go? Like, take me places. <laughs> sure, sure. So I was living in New York City for about 10 years, the last 10 years. I just left. I'm now in Austin, Texas. So I really changed my life <laughs> recently. But basically, I kind of fell into fashion. I started assisting a stylist when I was in college. Kind of just, I wanted to do something with my hands. I wanted to be creative. I wanted to be on set. And you know, when you're in college, universities, being on big sets is just exciting. You know, you're seeing everyone in their element. And what I liked about it is everyone had a very specific job and they only had one thing to do. You know, like there's one person just for lighting, one mm -hmm. person for props, one person for hair, one for makeup, one for nails, one for set. And it just fascinated me that you could basically specify on something so intricate and so small and that's your only job and it was just fun you know I absorbed a lot of their passion their creativity and that was in Chicago where I went to university and so when I moved to New York right after I graduated I was like hey, I'll just keep doing this because I already have the skill set and it's easy to kind of pick up odd jobs in New York there's a million stylists in New York and they all need help because it's just a crazy profession you're running around Manhattan you're on the train lugging clothes you know like up to studios like they always just need people and I'm really tall man so I always got hired <laughs> not because I was creative or interesting but just because I was a good pack mule and so I had a lot of work and then it just kind of kept going and going started doing my own shoots got an agent I had a great career, honestly. It just felt like something was always missing. Mm -hmm. So that job offers you some flexibility of schedule. You're not working every day. You kind of do a big project and then you have time off. Mm -hmm. So on the time off, I was always taking trainings, workshops, reading a million books, listening to literally hundreds and hundreds of podcasts. And I just started getting into the kind of light worker community. And I didn't really know what that meant at that time. I just was intrigued by these type of people. And I felt like they were speaking a language that I had never heard of, you know, like mm -hmm. all this 5D and Ascension and Crystalline Grid and all this stuff that I was like, when they said it, it resonated with me, like their tone of voice and how they spoke, but I didn't feel like I understood what they were saying and what was going on. So I just kind of dove in and basically any time that I had off, I was researching and studying. And I really dipped my toe in a lot of waters. You know, you try a lot of things. I feel like people get really frustrated sometimes on their spiritual path because they're like, I started tarot and I, I, you know, I'm not doing it consistently. And I don't know, as am I getting the right information? I can't tell. There's no like validation and I stop and start. I'll do something for a month and I give up. I tell people like, that's fine. You know, like that's going to happen. Not everything that you decide to do is going to be your ultimate passion and mm -hmm. you have to try things to know if they click for you or not so i was trying a lot of different things a lot of different schools and i eventually found a psychic school that i trained in for two years in new york and sorry it was online it was mm -hmm. a it was a physical school in chicago and then they transitioned a lot of their trainings online so i was styling in new york and then on my off days basically doing that 
And it wasn't really to become a professional psychic as much as it was to just kind of dive into your own life and your own past using the tools they're giving you, which kind of had a clairvoyant spin on it. So mm -hmm. it's kind of like self-therapy with other students while learning a skill, if that makes sense. What did they teach you there? Like, what, how did it look like? It was, you had no curriculum, you just kind of logged on and they mm -hmm. basically gave you a new tool to work with every week. And then you spent the whole week, um, you know, studying it, using it. And then another day a week, you exchanged readings. So one day you'd learn like what a grounding cord is, how to connect to the earth, you know, with your eyes closed. So you'd practice that all week. And then on the last day you'd come in and be like, okay, Leo, give Brigida a reading on how, per, what percentage she is grounded today. And what's the color of her grounding cord? What does that mean for her? Where is she not grounded in her life? What parts of her aura are not grounded? Are there any parts that are detached, fragmented? Where are they? What are they doing? Why is she not grounded? And you just have to basically give a cold reading Reading. And it was incredible practice for me just going and learning, learning to read kind of from nothing. Mm -hmm. And um, I went through that training, you learn a lot of things like that. It was really fun, but it wasn't the end all be all for me. I just felt like there was some piece missing. Like I loved the tools. I loved the training. I learned a lot, but I was like, there's just something juicier. Like I want something more concrete. And then I saw videos of Dolores Cannon, a famous hypnotist who is now passed, and some other people that trained with her, and they put up videos of hypnosis. And all the light bulbs just went off for me. I was like, mm -hmm. okay, this is it. I can add all the skills and tools I already know to this thing that feels parallel, and people can find their own information. Because I didn't like the model of me telling yeah. people about their life. I'm like, do you want me to tell you what your past life is? Or do you want to lay down and experience it? Yeah, sure. I think that's why it's so powerful. Like yeah. you're not taking away people's power in a way. And it's all them, really. You're just guiding them in a way. Yeah, right. So I guide them into the state. But after that, I'm basically just asking questions. Yeah. And then the rest is they're having their own aha moments. They're going, oh, now I see why I have this pattern. Now I know that I need to forgive this person. It's been affecting me much heavier than I thought intellectually. You know, I thought I moved on from this. I guess not. So I just loved that aspect of it that I could be beside them, but they were really having the full experience themselves. Mm -hmm. Now, I know a lot of people will be asking that. I get it all the time. How difficult what is it, was it for you to transition from that career? Because you were doing well, you enjoyed mm -hmm. your career, but yeah. there was something missing for you. Like, yeah. how easy was it for you to transition from one to the other? Well, it was an interesting parallel because when you're on set in fashion, you have the first two hours where everyone's just chit chatting. You know, I'm steaming, they're doing hair and makeup. So I kind of had an interesting pool of people that were creative, that were interesting, that had some expendable income. So I kind of had a network of people that were interested in what I was doing. So it wasn't this huge leap of like, I have no idea who I'm going to reach out to and I'm completely yeah. lost. So I had some interesting people in my life that I feel like could be potential first clients. But obviously it's a leap going from I'm dressing you to <laughs> I'm, you know, working through your deepest trauma. <laughs> You're like, yeah, it's, a, it's definitely a bit of a leap. But I think that I think that once you do a few once you do a few of them and you see how rapidly you can help someone and how quickly someone's life can change, that just puts a fire under you that comes through in how you speak to people, how you approach them. So even if you have no followers, you don't have a lot of clients behind you, if you know in your heart that you can help someone, that resonates somehow, even if it's through a text message or an Instagram DM, they can feel that your heart is in the right place and I feel like people give you a shot. So in the beginning, it was definitely chaotic, you know, juggling two careers and launching a new website and business and, you know, styling hours are definitely crazy. And it's mm -hmm. a very physically exhausting career. You're lugging clothes, you're up early. So the it was rocky for, you know, definitely several months. And then at some point you're kind of, you realize like 
you only have so much energy for one of these. Yeah. One of these has to go. <laughs> and yeah. So you were juggling two things for a couple of months and then you were like, okay, let's go for this full time. Probably six months. Yeah, I thought so because I was like, because mm, I done it in the same way, like myself, I was juggling for yeah. <laughs> for some time before right. the transition. And I remember right. you said to me, you know, when we just talked, you were like, oh, you know, once you start doing this job, like you want to get up every single day because it's super exciting. I was like, um, I love my job already. Like I'm already in the psychic world. You know, I was like, mm -hmm. how much more exciting can this get? Mm -hmm. And when I started practicing, I was like, now I know exactly what you meant. Mm -hmm. Like I'm waiting for a person to log on. Let's go yes. and let's get <laughs> things done here. It's yes. awesome. Yeah, because there's just that element of surprise. You just never know where a session is going to take you. A past life, a memory they forgot about, an entity, you know, I've dealt with extraterrestrials, implants, devices from other planets, you know, machines, robots that were around mm -hmm. people, just, you know, artificial intelligence. I have no idea where the session is going to go. That's the mystery and the fun of it. And I think, I think the thing to remember too is that this is for, you know, therapeutic benefit it's not just an entertainment thing of like oh cool you know like i lived in the 1800s and i was this woman it's like it's very emotional and i think that's important for you know people to know that if this is something that interests you that you know it's not a joy ride this is really you know deep work and you got to be ready for that too yeah for sure do you have stories that kind of stuck out to you the most that you remember and you refer to Oh, goodness. Yeah, I mean, definitely the very first few entity removals, I'll probably always remember because the thing is the people that I trained with, they have hundreds of videos on YouTube. So when clients come to them, they probably watched those, right? So their brain is primed to know what could happen. So mm -hmm. I was really curious to know if my clients ha would have the same type of journeys, if they'd have the same reactions without any knowledge because at that point i didn't really have any videos out i didn't have you know any following people were just kind of like well i don't know i know this person from <laughs> styling i'm just gonna give him a shot and see what happens so they really had no they were really stepping into the unknown as much as i was and so those first few times when another consciousness shows up as someone like hey i'm attached to this person i've been lingering around since they were eight years old and causing them headaches and back pain and high blood pressure bad dreams whatever it is my mind was just blown because i was like okay this will be very gradual like i'll start with memories for a few months and maybe i'll upgrade to past lives you know a few months after that it was like right from the start here we go <laughs> zero to 100 and that's really what blew me away yeah like i think i texted you i was like hey like i don't know how about you but like i'm getting it like entities from the first clients it's it's amazing yeah. and that's something that i wanted to deal with um okay i had a question that i have completely forgotten about um okay so i know every hypnotist they kind of mm -hmm. have their own style mm -hmm. how would you describe your style what do you like to focus on because you know sure. clients come to you and they kind of shape you into some sort of a different hypnotist. You know, you okay. can plan how you're going to do things, but usually it's the client. Where do you find yourself? Sure. Well, I definitely came from obviously a very spiritual background. So that's kind of how I started. And then my journey kind of has been taking a different route where I'm focusing a lot more on the body. Because mm -hmm. I found that that's how people get the biggest clearing. If you yeah. go to a past life and get some information or you go to a memory and you're like, okay, cool. This is where I picked up this pattern of like unworthiness or that I think money is the root of all evil or I don't deserve success. That's cool. But what I notice is when I would when I would say, okay, where is that programming in your body? Where do you feel that grief from your grandfather? Where is this pain from your parents' divorce? Where has your body been storing it? That's when I saw people making the biggest leaps mm -hmm. and getting the long-term changes. Because then they'd go, oh, I didn't realize I was carrying so much pain in my heart until mm -hmm. I said, now that you're in this memory and you're watching your parents fight and they're divorcing, what's happening in your body? 
And so everything I've been doing a lot more studying on somatic therapy, anatomy, learning the body, you know, the consciousness of organs, which organs tend to store which emotions and what causes, you know, long-term illnesses from that. It all just started to click for me. And instead of me explaining that to you, like, Hey, maybe you're, you know, your constipation is because you never forgave someone or, you know, like you've been holding on to your life so tightly trying to control things that you literally can't go to the bathroom. <laughs> You know? mm-hmm. Like instead of me telling that, I want them to feel that in the session. And I think that hip, most people think of hypnosis as a very mental journey. And yes, it is. But your sensations are all turned up. It's like the volume goes up on your sensitivity mm-hmm. and your awareness of everything happening your eyes are closed right so you can really feel into yeah okay my stomach is in knots as i'm watching the scene my heart is beating my hands are sweating and you learn the landscape of where your body stores things and then we can work together to release it from the body and then all the physical associations also get cleared along with the mental programming that you found in those memories Mm -hmm, for sure and that's why i think they say you know whoever is under hypnosis, they have big potential to be mediums because you're open Mm. to that. And when I had my first session done on me, um, I was like, let me see how it goes because I need to experience the same thing like clients would. Mm. And I woke up and I did have those, you know, bodily type of feelings. And um, my my classmate, uh, she was like, how was it? I was like, it wasn't the same like in mediumship because I do mediumship too. Mm but it's intensified at least twice, you know, because in mediumship, it's very kind of subtle. So we have to become blank canvas, Mm. but here it's like, it's nudging you. It would give you like a pain here. Then you Mm. would be talking and it gives you again. And it's like more intense (laughs) and intense. Pay attention to this. So it's really awesome that people can tune into that subconscious part and explore places. Mm -hmm. You are talking about robots and in, (laughs) And I'm really interested to hear a couple of stories, if you're willing to share about, you know, (laughs) artificial intelligence and all of that stuff. Sure. So many times when I encounter entities in a session, that basically just means that we found a soul that happened to attach to someone's body or energetic field. Most of the time they're human and they can either know you like, oh, this is my grandma that you know wanted to watch the family grow up and she never moved to the light or it could be a totally random person like you were in the wrong place at the wrong time and you just kind of picked up this hitchhiker as mm-hmm. i call them or a little parasite and sometimes you get something that is completely non-human i've had things that are like i have no shape or they're a blob or you know basically i've heard everything under the sun at this point i think and recently i've had a few where they told me that they were basically a created intelligence, that they Mm -hmm. were some form of technology. So if you think about where we're at currently with artificial intelligence, we are at the, you know, very beginning stages, and they're still doing some pretty incredible things, right? So if you fast forward, thousands, or more years, think about what we're going to be able to create in terms of artificial intelligence. At that point, they are their own consciousness. And so they probably have some autonomy and they might not stick on that planet or wherever they are created. And as some of them told me, they they had souls. And so when they left those places, for whatever reason, this one very recently told me that it came to earth because it really wanted to be human. It was, it was sad that it was a robot. Mm-hmm. So it attached to my client as basically this hitchhiker because it was it was honestly angry (laughs) it was very confused like why am i not human this is what i want to be i don't understand what went wrong Mm -hmm. and so it also shows you that you know that it's it's chaos out there you know we live in a huge universe and just because they're further along doesn't mean they've figured everything out and things go wrong there's miscommunication there's mishaps there's autonomy and you know this sounds i i understand how this sounds as i'm saying it like this is a big leap for some people to to think that you know oh okay a robot from some other planet attached to my client well it was causing her um, severe lower back pain for five years and she went to every doctor chiropractor did every type of therapy and in one week it was gone after after this robot was removed 
she hasn't had back pain since, and it's been months. And so whether this is a true, you know, a true thing that happened or a symbol or a metaphor, I don't really care as long as that Mm -hmm. person feels better, you know, how you integrate and process this, maybe your subconscious gave you this idea of a robot, or it's truly an artificial intelligence from another dimension or planet. That's great. You know, I leave that up to you. All I care about is that the symptoms and feelings get better. Yeah. Because for some things out there, we don't really have references to. So we have to refer to something to create something to make sense to us. Exactly. I tell people like when the Native Americans saw the ships coming into America for the first time, they didn't see them because their brain has never seen a ship like that. So it was basically like a mirage. They didn't, their eyes and brain had no point of reference. Mm -hmm. So until they got right to the shore, that's when the image actually came into view for them. And so the same for us, you know, we have no idea what technology is going to look like in a thousand plus years or on these other planets. So your brain does the best that it can and, you know, formulating something for you to work with. So, yeah, it's really a mystery. And that's kind of what I love about it. Yeah, it's funny that you said that because literally like a couple of days ago, I was talking to my friend saying when I was 15, if someone gave me an iPhone, you know, and and I I, I wouldn't know what to do with it. (laughs) Yeah, you wouldn't know how to use that. And that's only a few years, you know, like that's not very long. But that's not not at all and you know when you talked about artificial intelligence straight away what popped in my mind you know when i viewed your story for you i feel like you implement some of that energy because you're very into techno Mm. as well right you're very into that that type of vibe so that's what you get and like this is people are vibing with your vibe that's true you know it's funny you say that because i had a download a while ago that i was like we must be part you know, artificial intelligence already. Does it make sense that, you know, as the generations moving forward, they're into an electronic sound? Because if we're an organic being, right, if we're totally from this earth, we should be inclined to be pulled towards organic sounds, organic foods, things that vibrate with the place that we're from. So Mm -hmm. if we're so obsessed with this music, this sound, that sounds almost very alien, then what is that telling you? If your brain lights up, your heart opens from this sound that feels kind of robotic and very technological, then to me, that means that that part is within us already. And it's saying, yes, like we're here. And, and it feels right. It doesn't have to be a scary thing, you know, like, I think we're doing just fine. <laughs> yeah, sure. It's the same like those, you know, alpha, beta, theta sounds right. that are really right. healing for us. Like right, we didn't have right. that before. We had like flutes and drums and all of that stuff. Right. Yeah, exactly. Awesome. Okay. So you spent 10 years in New York, correct? Yes. It's so interesting. Now I'm getting to know you a bit more because I spent 10 years in London and that, that's when mm. I transitioned to <laughs> spirituality. So okay, it's similarities great. like that are awesome. Do you have like a vision for yourself? Do you feel fulfilled now? Right now? I'm not talking about, you know, massive goals in the future, but mm. right now, do you feel like you found a tool that gives you everything that you need at this very moment? I, f- I mean, for myself or for my clients? For, I'd call it a mission of yours, you know, what Mm. you do. I feel like I found the foundation of something I'm going to be building upon for a long time. I needed this piece. I needed to do a bunch of sessions. I needed to get to a point where I felt very comfortable with it. And then I had a grasp on the flow and what could be possible. Because, you know, you hear the stories about people getting better and their life changing, but you need to know that for yourself as a practitioner. And I feel like I kind of turned that corner recently where you gain just different levels of confidence so that when people come to you, I'm very honest about if I can help you or not based on what I have seen. Mm -hmm. And I've also learned to kind of read where people are at in their consciousness and how much they're going to be able to absorb and take from these sessions. And I'm very honest about that too. And of course, you know, there's still surprises, but in regards to your question, I feel like this is the first piece of a very big puzzle. I'm a big dreamer. 
I am a really, really hard worker, very consistent. I've always just gone at a hundred percent, pretty relentless. I just, I don't take no for an answer. And I don't let a lot of things stop me and I don't have a lot of fear of failure. And so I feel like that has really benefited me in this realm. Um, yeah. And with my background in styling, you know, aesthetics and technology, you know, I have a degree in graphic design, you know, like all these, you know, it's all kind of coming together. I taught myself video editing. So, you know, I'm really, things are definitely coming together in a really cool way. Awesome. So now let's backtrack to your childhood because a lot of times people, when they were younger, either they'd be sensitive already, either they'd be kind of a bit spiritual, not understanding what that is. Did you find yourself, you know, being connected to that, you know, maybe a bit asking questions that maybe other kids wouldn't or where you yeah. grew up, did you grow up in a spiritual kind of environment or? Yes, I did. Um, it was kind of both. My parents were pretty spiritual. They taught me and my two older brothers to meditate as children. But then, you know, three boys, sports, you get wild, you know, it fell off the wagon pretty quickly, but it definitely stuck in my mind. Um, they were also scientists. So they kind of opened all the doors and they were just like, if you're a good person, you get good grades and you know, you do the right things. We don't really care which door you you walk through. You know, we accept you for who you are. And they didn't, they weren't really pushy except for, you know, get a good education and be healthy and make good decisions, you know, take care of yourself. And the rest, they're kind of like, you know, enjoy, make mistakes, fall on your face, try new things. So I feel like I just got really lucky in, in this family that kind of, they opened that door for me, but they didn't, push it on me. Mm -hmm. um, so it was always kind of around. I was definitely a wild child. I had tons of energy, yeah, asking a lot of questions. I was definitely could read a room and read people's energy and personality and emotions very quickly. You know, I was like a teenager doing tarot for their friends, you know, 15, 16, all that good stuff. And um, yeah, so it was definitely around. Um, I just, I didn't ever think it was going to be a career. I was like, this will just be part of my life. I'll kind of be doing this for my friends. It's like in the background, you know, I, I didn't want to be seen. I never wanted to do an Instagram live. I never wanted to make videos. Like I even, you know, I, I laugh thinking back to it. You know, like my first videos, I was terrified, you know, doing an Instagram live. I was shaking. Like even when I went to the hypnosis training, we all have to, you know, speak on the mic and introduce ourselves. I was like this. Really? Like, you look I'm, so laid I'm back. <laughs> you look so I'm, laid back. I've never expect that from you, you know? Uh, but again, perception, perception, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, and in this work, you just grow so much. You know, like, there's just, you have to step up. At some point, you can either stay there doing this work with your hood on in the back, you know, like, all in the dark. But I just feel like, again, when you get a taste of how much you can help someone, that is just there's no better feeling getting those messages like hey i slept for the through the night for the first time in 20 years <laughs> you know like when you have that in the back of your mind as a potential you, you just can't stay in the dark anymore you have to walk into that next phase for sure so i know probably a couple of people watching this will be very unfamiliar what hypnosis introspective hypnosis is because i know mm -hmm. there are different types sure, um sure. Do you want to kind of run through really quickly? Um, I don't want to be the one because I'm interviewing you <laughs> and you are more experienced cool. now. How was your training and how was everything? What did you take with yourself, you know, that you're like, whoa, that's mm. awesome. Mm. The training was great. I, we trained with the same people, Antonio Sangio and Alba Weinman in their style of introspective hypnosis. And the training was very quick. Now that I've talked to a lot of other, you know, hypnotherapists, there are some that are very, you know, several months long. Ours was quite short and you get a lot of information very quickly, but that, but that works for, for me, you know, for my style, because I self-study a lot. And because they have so many hundreds of videos online, 
I was always just listening to their flow. I wanted mm -hmm. to just absorb the questions they would ask. How do you transition from a traumatic memory into a new one? When does it like end? When do you like, when does that piece feel resolved? And how do you go to the next thing? Like all these little things. So I was just always listening for all the months leading up to the training. So by the time that I got there, I kind of knew the pieces I was missing so I could really listen to them. I know Alba, sorry, I'm going to interrupt quickly. Alba mm -hmm. and Antonio, they have two different styles. Were you more mm -hmm. into Antonio's style or Alba's? What did you find yourself? I would say I kind of pull from both. Um, you know, Alba has definitely the more of the slower, more spiritual. She has more of a feminine touch. Antonio comes from kind of a tech background, really. And he has more of a logistical find the information where is it you know kind of clear through it pretty quickly so you know i kind of pulled the things that i liked from both of them to be honest and again in the end you kind of formulate your own thing anyway kind of all mixes in the end and you just you find your own way after a while anyway but yeah i would say the training was great and the thing that i really liked was that they they really just give you a lot of information. You know, like there's not that many hypnotherapy trainings that offer information about past life regression and entities and soul fragmentation. Mm -hmm. Like these are huge topics. You could do a whole month on soul fragmentation, yeah. a whole month on entities, a whole month on past life regression, you know? So to do, to pack that all in, I know that it was probably a lot for some people, but I just appreciate having it and being able to take it and run with it. And I think it probably was easier for you since you've taken, you know, psychic right. practices, because at one point I was, I was listening to them talk and, you know, speak about walk-ins and, you know, entities mm. and how that, and I was like, if I wasn't in this field, right. I don't know how I would have felt in that training because the right. not there to explain you what that is. That's your own stuff. Go research, read books. Here you go. You know, let's right. move on. So. Right. Maybe that's why, because Antonio said, you know, not many people continue doing this job because it's not a very comfortable job. There is never, you know, you, you don't know what to expect. So when you started the first session, did you feel like you were, after the first session, you were drained? Mm. No, I didn't feel drained. I always felt starving. I'm always so hungry. <laughs> I think I didn't realize how much, you know, when you're concentrating on every breath, every word, every mm -hmm. tone, every little movement, it really just, it takes a lot of attention. So I'm not like exhausted. I'm just really hungry. And again, that's why I'm really grateful for the training I did before it, because they drilled grounding and having your space and clearing your field and sensing when, you know, someone's siphoning or taking too much of you when you're offering too much. So I had two years of like drilling all that into me, the basics. Yeah. First, first chakra, root chakra, do you feel safe? Do you feel grounded? Are you in your body? You know, if you're half out and floaty and dissociated, you're not going to be able to do something like this for four hours <clears throat> as the practitioner. So I feel like at that time, I didn't realize how much that training was going to help me in those moments. So now I'm really appreciative of it. Whereas when I was in it, I was like, are we still doing grounding on, you know, month six? I'm like, are you kidding me? I'm so over this. And now I get it because they want you to do it so many times that you get bored of those tools. And then when you get bored of doing a tool so often, now it's absorbed into your subconscious mind and you're not thinking about grounding. You're just automatically doing it. Mm -hmm. And now I was like, oh, those bastards got me. <laughs> so now I'm really appreciative of all that. Yeah, so you are all set before that. So regarding your own sessions, uh, mm -hmm. do you take four hours or do you do quicker ones as well? Like, do you have variations? I used to, I used to have a variation. I used to have a two and a half hour and four hour, and then they always end up going over. So I was like, all right, this is just silly. And I felt weird, like, okay, you went over an hour, I'm going to charge you. So now mm -hmm. I'm just like, however long it goes is however long it goes. It's a flat fee. I don't really time it. If it goes two and a half hours or if it goes four, four and a half, it's the same price. However long you need is your session. And it just kind of flows organically. And mostly they've been landing around three and a half hours. That's pretty much the average at this point. Yeah, I could shorten it and quicken the pace up. But these are people's 
deepest traumas. These are the things that they've spent their whole life avoiding or not wanting to look at or pushing down further and further down or just waiting for the right time and space to do this. So I'm not going to rush that process. Mm -hmm. If you need to sit there and take a break and take deep breaths and then go back into the memory. Great. You know, like take as long as you need. I'm not here to make this a certain time frame. There are certain styles. I'm not going to name names, but there are certain styles that try and cap it at certain time periods because they want it to be rapid. Yeah. And I just don't believe in that process. However long you need is however long you need. Yeah. Yeah, that's really, really right. Because I was like, mm, you know, I I was looking people up as well, you know, seeing how people do things, not to mm -hmm. kind of copy them, but to kind of get, yeah. you know, an average. And I was like, I don't know if I have a set timing. Because with one person, it was super quick and they were like, right. oof, you know, I'm good. Like, right. I feel like I finished, I scanned my body, I'm good. Mm -hmm. And it was like two and a half hours and the other person right. was like four. And I'm like, nah, I think you want to take one person and keep them for a day and just kind of go with it. Right. Right. See why right. they... Yeah, and what are you gonna say? Oh, sorry, your time's up. As time's in the middle up. of their, they're crying. You know, like they're working through a traumatic memory. You're like, oh, sorry. You know, like, or you, you know, insert another hundred dollars to keep going. You know, like, it's just, it's not the easiest thing to navigate. I feel like yeah. everyone has to find their flow and what feels right for them. But at this moment, that's kind of the structure that I've set up and what seems to be working and what feels right to me. Mm -hmm. So. Do you have already like a set schedule? Because I know when you start this job or any really job like this, um, you kind of have to adjust. Um, yeah. Are you taking people Monday to Friday? Um, and how many do you feel like you're able to take? Mm -hmm. Do you have like your own energy set? Yeah, that also takes some time to figure out. I used yeah. to, I definitely went through phases where I was taking too many people and that definitely drained me because you know, you are watching really intense things. And there were some days where I do two in a day. And then I very quickly realized I was like, I cannot do two in a day, especially if they are back to back days. Mm -hmm. So the sweet spot that I'm at right now is like four a week, four mm -hmm. sessions a week. That's what feels right. I could take more and I won't be drained, but I also need to live my life. I moved to a new city. I want to see friends be out in nature. Like I moved to Texas to, you know, have space and time and I'm not in this career to hustle. And, yeah. and that shows up that I could see sometimes in my sessions that I wasn't a hundred percent clear and fully with that person. And that's not fair to that person either. If I'm showing up like, okay, so what are we doing today? You know, like I should know what we're doing today. I should be there and be very prepared and do my homework. And so that's, that just takes time of like trial and error, figuring out that balance. Yeah. And you have to recharge yourself. It's not like an right. office job Monday, Friday, you know, right. Party yeah. and back to work. Yeah. That's no, it. right. It's you, it really takes a scheduling. You can't, have any chemicals the day before you know like you can't mm -hmm. just like have a few glasses of wine and then the next day do a session like at least for me you know like it just it really got to like prepare for these these are sacred journeys in my opinion yeah for sure so what would you like to tell people who okay i'm going to split it to two there's going to mm -hmm. be definitely one group who will want to go and learn and study themselves sure <laughs> and there's going to be another group probably who will want to try it themselves because there are a lot of you know myths about what hypnosis is right. and um if you want to clear some things out mm. for people that'd be great sure so probably the biggest misconceptions are that you're going to sleep or that you won't remember or that you're out of control the coolest part about hypnosis is that you're really there along the journey you're very conscious it's like being in a deep med meditation than having someone in your ear talking you through things. So you're there, you're very, it's like focused relaxation. So mm -hmm. you could get up, use the bathroom, come back in, you can laugh, cry, blow your nose. It's very interactive. It's kind of like just when you lay down to bed after a few minutes, you feel yourself getting heavier, you're relaxing, you know, you're kind of transitioning into something else, but you could still pass someone a glass of water that's laying next to you. You could respond you know but if you have to go to the bathroom you're also like 
but I'm so relaxed and it feels so nice to be here, you know? So it's kind of like that zone. So you remember everything. You're very there. You can always choose not to go down a memory if it's coming up. You're very, it's very interactive. This is a two-way street. You have to accept the journey. It's not something that I can force upon you. <clears throat> and yeah, people have seen like stage hypnotists and things like that. <clears throat> and like shock inductions. I don't do any of those. I don't really believe in that. And yeah, they can work. And I won't go into the whole reason why that you can get someone on stage and make them squawk like a chicken. But this is, this is therapy, you know, like this is really a sacred yeah. journey. And you want to know the person that you're going down this road with and you want to vibe with them. Yeah. So that's probably the biggest misconceptions. Would you would you agree with all that? For sure. And like, stage hypnosis at least to me is just to really quickly show people that hypnosis actually work right. um right. and you know behind the scenes what's happening there it's really intense really intense right. work that right. you do right. Right. um can i ask you um haven't you have you tried shock hypnosis in your practice why don't you don't you vibe with it because i know everyone is very different I just feel that a person doesn't need to be tricked into anything. Mm -hmm. And also you don't know their past history with trauma. Yeah. And even, even if they didn't tell you in the beginning, um, when you ask them all the questions, they might have lied or they, they might have buried it so deep that they don't remember. And then now you scream or yell or you make a loud noise and now you've re-triggered something traumatic that's been buried in their subconscious mind. So I just feel like, People are intelligent. You, this is supposed to be a two-way street where we trust each other. I'm not trying to shock you into mm -hmm. you know, this trance-like state. So I have other ways for analytical minds to get in other than the like very deep, hypnotic, gentle way. Um, yeah. But uh, the point I wanted to make about um, the stage hypnotists, if people know it, if you, if you see that you can get people on stage and make them do something ridiculous that they don't want to do, imagine when you're on the same team and you have an aligned mission. If they could do something like basically against, you know, that makes them look ridiculous, think of what's possible when you're trying, if you want to cultivate more joy, if you want to sleep mm -hmm. better, if you want a healthier life, if you're trying to clear a long-term illness, you know, if they could do that in five minutes, imagine what we could do in four hours. For sure. And also <laughs> along the way you have free will. So even if I tell you, okay, Leo now, you know, do something ridiculous. If you don't agree in your mind, it right. doesn't go with your morals, you're not going to go into it. And it's right. as simple as that. Right. And I love it. I love those moments and sessions where I ask a leading question and I'm like, so is this from your mom? And they're like, no, <laughs> I love it because it shows that they're there, you know, like they're not yeah. just like agreeing and going with the flow of what I think or what I say. They're like, no, this isn't her. You know, like this isn't her energy. And I just love those moments because they validate that there's, you really tapped into something that's really wise that isn't just going along this journey for the heck of it. Yeah, sure. Sure. And they can argue with you and you're going to end up arguing with people, <laughs> bringing right. them a point until they right. agree that, yeah, actually that's so true, you know? Right, right. So back to your kind of divided question, the people that are interested in hypnosis, the people that I find have the best journeys are people that are ready to make a change, that are ready to forgive anyone in their life, ready to take responsibility. They're done looking at everything outside of them, like, oh, this is my mom's fault, this is society's fault, mm -hmm. this is this person, the school, my bully. Yeah, we've all had crazy shit happen to us, and they played a role. However, there's only so long that you can stay in, in that, oh, poor, woe is me. So when you feel like and you don't have to be a hundred percent there, you know, like, and that's not blaming anyone. We've all been there where it's like, how the hell did this person break up with me? Why did my dad, you know, like beat me as a child that I was just a little kid. You know, like there are things that don't make sense and that are unfair. I'm not saying that, but what I'm saying is you, it's time to now to, that you can change the story. Mm -hmm. One of my favorite phrases in hypnosis is it's never too late to have a happy childhood because memory is a active process. Every time you pull out that book from the library, you change it. 
with every time you replay it. So replay it and insert something beautiful and new so that part of your brain remembers the new thing you inserted there, the lesson you learned from your terrible father, the things you gained from having to raise yourself, the confidence you learned from you know, having that bully in school that brought you down, that actually taught you the things that you love about yourself. And then your brain plays that loop instead of the drama, trauma, shame, guilt, blame. Mm -hmm. And so the people that have the best journeys are the people that have tried a lot of things or they feel like they're not getting enough traction with some other modalities or regular talk therapy, or they haven't been able to go deep enough into their subconscious mind and they're ready to step up and have a big change. Those are the people that have the best journeys. And if you're looking for a quick fix or someone to give you a healing or provide a service for you, and you're just going to lay and check out, this isn't you know, this isn't the service for you. And the people that want to learn this process, I would say, contact a lot of schools, contact students that went to those schools, take your time, see if you if the teachers will have a 20 minute call with you, see if you like this person, do they have content online? If not, why? <laughs> you know, like, maybe they're an OG person that didn't have YouTube when they were doing this. That's cool. You know, like maybe you want to study from someone in their 60s, 70s, 80s that's been doing this a long time. If that vibes with you, awesome. And they're out there. If you want to slow down, do a long format, six month training, learn clinical hypnosis, learn more about, you know, the holistic body and long-term illnesses. And you really want to spread this out. Cool. That's there. If you want to learn in one week and get a lot of information, great. That's there. There's the whole spectrum. And there's, you know, a lot of ways to go about this. In the end, know how you learn, know how, you know, your style, where you're at. If you're starting from zero, you know, probably take the longer one. If you've done, if you're good at self-studying, if you're learning a lot on your own and you can do this, you know, take a shorter one. You can do this in whatever timeline that fits for you. It just, it's all up to you. Yeah, for sure. I don't know how about you, but for me, you know, life classes are much more, I don't know, not only engaging, but you can pick up a lot from a life, life class because you can ask many Definitely. questions. And yeah. yeah, so when I went on the website on QHHT, I was like, I don't mm -hmm. know, it doesn't, but that's my, that's me only on my own, you know, I know it vibes with people and it's their thing. I was like, I need interaction. I don't feel like, you know, right. there's something missing for me there. Yeah. And, and I know they do a lot of questions. Yeah, you do. And that's what you I know. like with Antonio. I'm going to hashtag mm -hmm. Antonio. <laughs> I'm going to send him this video. It's like promoting Antonio Sanja. But um, he takes as many questions as you you want like yeah. he's not yes. he's never frustrated yeah. he's like okay right. let's stop here if we right. need go to go overboard you'll go overboard right yeah and he has a continuing um basically mentorship where you pay like something ridiculous like ten dollars a month like nothing and you can be on this forum with all these hundreds of other people that are on the same level as you where you can practice with each other and ask questions and he does like mock things of like hey when your client says this how do you respond it's genius it's awesome because then you see all the responses like this is how what i would say you know like mm -hmm. when someone gets stuck and they feel like they're not in a memory and they're just in darkness what do you do and you know you see all these people commenting and you get new ideas you get awesome ideas you can be like nope that is not what are supposed to do and those are cool too because you learn and you know like that's just a great form and he's very fast you're not going to wait a week to hear back from him he really his heart's in the right place he, he wants his students to succeed and it shows yeah he's on a mission and there's not many teachers that are still doing sessions so you could do a training with him and get a session from him which is honestly very rare yep I've booked with him. I'll see where I go, what kind of dark places I visit. <laughs> Great. <laughs> On the way. Did you have a session with him? Actually, no, because when we were there, you know, it was in person. They filled up fast. Because at that point, I don't, maybe they were doing Zoom. I can't remember. I don't think so. Um, so the in person ones filled up, you know, because there's only a few slots. So yeah. yeah, I never got one. And how was your first session um, when it was? Did you have anyone do a session on you? 
Yeah, I had a, I had someone give me a session before I took the training. Mm-hmm. Not someone that trained in his style. It was someone that from QHHT, and I realized that I didn't like that style. So actually, it you know gave me the confirmation I needed to do Antonio's because I was like, this was not a good journey, <laughs> and I really know that this could be a lot better. And it's not you know putting that style to shame. There's a lot of people that have had great success with it. It just didn't vibe with me, and they only taught one induction and stuff like that. So anyway. It, It just kind of led me to where I needed to be, I feel like. Yeah. So personally for you, what did you miss from that? Like we're not bashing H, you know, QHHT, but like, what did you miss from it? Did you feel like you didn't go deep enough or? The induction was pretty short. They only teach one induction style. So if you have a different brain type of person, very analytic, you know, it's just kind of one size fits all. Mm -hmm. And there was just other things I was, it was in person. I was on a little couch and I was half my body was hanging off and I was in front of these big windows and it was so bright, you know, and just all that kind of stuff. And also um, when they take you to a memory, they want, they try and circle you through the memory for like, I think 15 minutes for you to be in that, to get your bearings. But I wasn't vibing with this memory. So she kept asking all these questions about it and questions. And you could see that I was like, you know, just not connecting, but because she had been trained to stay in that first memory for this amount of time, instead of just, you know, tossing the rules and doing your own thing and continuing and flowing, you know, it just wasn't meshing. And she basically told me that at the end of like, yeah, we were taught to stay with it, you know, no matter what. And I was like, okay, well, you could have just moved on, you know, like if you just didn't care. So did you feel like that memory wasn't very important? Did you want to jump into another one? Yeah, it was a past life. And it just like, there wasn't much happening. And I was just kind of floating through this village. It wasn't one person. And she just kept asking me questions. Who's there? What's going on? And it was just like going on for too long that I was getting bored in my own session. But when you get bored, you can come out of the hypnosis, can't you? Yeah. Do you feel like that happened to you? Yeah, or? because then I started asking questions in my conscious mind, like, what's going on? Like, how long am I going to be in here? Like, yeah. are we really still? So then, yeah, like, you kind of get pulled out of the experience. Yeah. We had that in our class, too, when we were just practicing for that first time ever. Everyone was kind of shitting their pants. You know, how do we do this? <laughs> Definitely. For sure. For so, sure. We got stuck um, with a couple of people. I got stuck with, um, I did it on a, on a mail and the problem was his wife was at home and he was talking about wife Mm. and it was, you know, a bit of an awkward situation. That's tricky. (laughs) That's tricky. So that was that. And then the other person who was performing hypnosis, we were in the same chat, like we couldn't get her, you know, to places because she wasn't as visual. And, mm. you know, instead of swapping to feeling, you know, the person who did hypnosis on her, like, imagine, what do you see? You know, what do you see? And she couldn't get past, you know, that memory very much. And she started feeling guilty because she knew right. that she was, you know, practiced on. And right. she, at one point she opened her eyes, but not because of frustration on the practitioner, because of herself. And she came out mm. of it and she's like, why I couldn't go past this? Like, and then we started talking to her and she's like, oh, I could hear my, you know, husband and kids running around. And Mm-mm. that's another thing why people have yeah. to be on their own. Yeah. Yeah. It's not a perfect system in those trainings, you know, like people are at home, their family's home, it's quarantine. So yeah, when you do a one-on-one session, you know, with me or you, you, you set, you set that up in a much better way. You know, like you find a spot that's just for you, but yeah, in the training, stuff like that happens. Yeah. Did you... So since people are, you know, hanging around home a bit more often now and spending more time, do you find it difficult arranging sessions with people um, to find a space, you know, when they're on their own? Because it's a long session. It's like four hours. Yeah. yeah. I feel that if you really want to do it, you just find a way. You find a friend, a family member. I've had people book hotel rooms. (laughs) Like if you really, if you want this, something will Something yeah. will happen where you figure it out. You ask your roommate, your family to go to the park for a while, you know, mm-hmm. whatever it is, go see a movie, go see grandma. I don't know. I haven't had too many issues because I'm very clear about that. And yeah. I just hold that space of like, if you want this to be a big journey, you've got to set it up to be a 
big journey and yeah. take care of every little thing. So I had this long checklist that I send people right from the beginning. And so they're like, okay, yeah, I need to figure this out. Yeah, and I think you, you set the vibe because it's pretty serious. Yeah, right. Yeah, like they always say, the induction begins with the first, the, your website, you know, your social media, yeah. your first impression. That's when the, the whole thing begins. So, yeah. You gotta, and you're pretty good at that. You're really good at aesthetics. And that's, you know, I want to talk about this a bit because people think, oh, I've studied this and that and that. And, you know, um, mm. now I'm here. I wasted my time. We haven't mm. wasted your time. You take those experiences like you, aesthetics, design, you know, all of that right. stuff. Now right. you're doing, um, what is, it's a new project where you do oh, like yes. visualization. Oh my God, like it takes me places <laughs> just looking at it. <laughs> yeah, that's the point. Yeah, so I'm so excited about this new service. It's called Subconscious Films. And basically it's like subliminal messaging but the one that you want. <laughs> so we play a very hypnotic kaleidoscope to get you entranced. And then after that, we make a movie together based on clips that basically align with your dream life. It's like a vision board, but in movie format. Mm -hmm. So let's say you're looking for, you know, incredible health. We'll find all these clips of people that kind of look like you that are exercising, eating well on the beach, doing activities that you like, see them in radiant health so that your brain starts feeling like this is familiar because you never can pull something in unless your brain knows that pattern. So it's basically ingraining that pattern into your subconscious mind and saying, hey, this is what's important to me. So anything related to this, start bringing to me. You know, it's very law of attraction. So then your brain and your life, it starts to magnetize those experiences to you. And you watch the film in the morning and in the evening. It's pretty short, you know, three to four minutes, plus the kaleidoscope, which is another three to four minutes. So all in all, it's like eight minutes. And you watch mm -hmm. it twice a day and it just goes deeper and deeper and deeper. And suddenly your life starts to transform into the movie. Yeah. So as I understand, someone can basically uh, book with you to make a movie suitable for themselves and you right. do it and you send it to them. Right. Yeah. That's so awesome. be like, what kind of music do you want? What kind of words, affirmations do you want me to put into it? And obviously, you know, I'm adding my hypnotic audio command so you're watching the movie you're kind of in trance then i'm like okay this is your life you are in radiant health you're healthier than you have ever been you're waking up fresh and grounded clear-headed your interpersonal relationships are better than ever you know whatever it is you're working on and then the affirmations just sink right in so yeah it starts with a one-on-one -on -one session of like what are you creating what kind of music do you like what kind of images films clips you know bring out this emotion for you because it has to be emotional mm -hmm. you have to really feel it so that your brain thinks this is happening right now and then it really does eventually <laughs> it starts to create it for you so yeah i never thought i'd be combining you know video all these random skills that i had i never knew how they would intertwine so i'm gonna kind of wrap this up um is there Great. anything else that you'd like to share i haven't asked you today uh, about this whole journey crazy uh... journey it's just a beautiful journey, you know, it's just one of those things you never really fully feel ready, whether it's becoming a practitioner or doing one of these, it's kind of like jumping into cold water, you just got to take a deep breath and leap, you know, there's never the perfect day to look at your trauma or, you know, your childhood or forgive your mom, that day never comes, you have to create it. So if you're listening to this and your heart, something in your body is vibrating and you're like, yes, but then a part of you is like, no, I'm terrified. Just, you know, I have a free call on my website. There's a calendar there. It's always updated. If you have questions, comments, concerns, you want to just, you know, talk back and forth like me and you did and, you know, figure something out. There's no pressure to book a session. It's always just, you know, and I'll be very honest if I feel like it's the right fit. Um, mm -hmm. So that's probably the main things to know that just listen to your body and it'll tell you if it's a yes. Awesome. Thank you for coming on, Leo. It was Thank awesome talking you to you. Thank you so much for <laughs> having me. It's always a joy to see you. Thank you. I'm going to leave Leo's links down below. Whoever is vibing, go and find him. It's going to be in the description box. And Great. maybe we're going to come on sometime in the future. Who knows? I'd love you know, to. And talk about stuff. <laughs> I'd love to. I'm an open book. Ask away. <laughs> awesome. Okay. Bye, guys. Um, and...
Leo, until next time. Until next time.